Director Howard Hawks once said that a great movie is three good scenes and no bad ones. But is that truthful? Well, sometimes, but definitely not always. After all, plenty of great movies have a bad scene or two. The following movies are all reminders of that. They're all thoroughly accomplished and impressive pieces of horror cinema, but nonetheless, viewers will find a god-awful scene lurking in all of them, casting a shadow over what is otherwise an enjoyable experience. With that in mind, I'm Adam from What Culture, and here are 10 god-awful scenes in otherwise perfect horror movies. Number 10. Let the right one in, the cat attack. 2019's Cats wasn't the first time these wonderful, much-loved feline creatures who are probably man's second best friend, after dogs of course, were appallingly represented with god-awful CGI. The same thing happened in the Swedish horror film Let the Right One In. In this scene, a gang of house cats attack an unfortunate woman who has been turned into a vampire, and this moment truly is awful. Not only are the special effects risible, but the whole thing is just an unintentionally hilarious mistake that will only have viewers rolling their eyes. If you switch this scene out of context, you'd think you were watching a schlocky B-movie in the vein of Birdemic, Shock and Terror. In fact, Let the Right One In is a modern horror masterpiece, a rich, beautiful, and emotionally shattering affair that is arguably one of the very, very best horror films of the 21st century. This scene is simply a very bizarre outliner in what is otherwise a mature and captivating in work. The film's surprisingly American remake, Let Me In, also had some iffy CGI moments, but thankfully nothing quite as bad as this. Number 9. 10 Cloverfield Lynn, The Ending. 10 Cloverfield Lynn, the spin-off to 2008's Cloverfield, is a very different beast from its predecessor. That one was a big monster movie. This one is a claustrophobic chamber piece involving two young people trapped in a bunker with an unstable stranger. But it works really well, and is a total winner in its own right. The bulk of the film is set in the bunker, and thanks to some excellent acting, especially from John Goodman, who deserved an Oscar nomination for his work but inevitably didn't get one, and strong writing, this part of the film succeeds with fly in colours. Unfortunately, the very end of the film in which protagonist Michelle escapes from the bunker and fights an alien is weaker and feels like it came from a different movie altogether. It was right to include the aliens from Cloverfield somehow, but it should have happened a bit earlier and the inclusion of this plot point didn't feel organic. While Michelle destroying this terrifying alien with a Molotov cocktail of all things was a bit on the silly side. Number 8. The Wicker Man, Britt Eklund's Cringy Seduction Fail. The Wicker Man is a true horror classic and it's among the finest British horror films ever made. It's also one of the weirdest you'll ever watch. It's a very strange and surreal story with many bizarre little moments, while scares in the traditional sense are basically non-existent. The film does have plenty of slightly silly moments, and for the most part, such scenes only add to the film's unsettlingly weird tone and idiosyncratic charm. There is, however, one scene which definitely tilts the film overboard into silly territory. The rather cringe-inducing moment where island resident Willow McGregor, played by Britt Eklund, does a strange naked dance and sings a song, trying to seduce protagonist Sergeant Neil Howie. This whole scene is just a bit too silly for its own good, and the various shots in which the naked Willow sings while looking directly into the camera make it pretty uncomfortable to watch. Howie himself does not respond to her advances, as he is a devout Christian who does not believe in sex before marriage. Of course, that plot element plays a big part in the film's harrowing climax. Number 7. Ring, The White Shoes Ring is a terrifying, haunting horror masterpiece that is among the best-paced horror movies out there. The film packs an incredible amount into just 90 minutes, and every single scene adds to the film and moves the story forward. Or rather, almost every scene. There is a completely baffling, bizarre scene early on in the film where secondary protagonist Ryuji is sitting on a bench in Tokyo. Ryuji is a psychic, and as he's sitting, a female figure wearing white shoes approaches him. Was it you? Did you do this? He asks, seeing her presence. Then she vanishes. What did this mean? Who was this figure? No idea, sorry. This is literally never mentioned again, and in what is otherwise such a well-constructed, watertight piece of storytelling, this sure as hell sticks out like a sore thumb. Number 6. Onibaba, the overly abrupt cliffhanger ending. This Japanese horror drama about the breakdown in the relationship between a young woman and her mother-in-law after a man comes between them is an absolutely stunning piece of work, and easily one of the best Japanese horror films ever made. The direction, acting, and storytelling are all absolutely first-rate, making this an unusually accomplished and effective horror film. The one jarring problem with it? It ends at least five minutes too early. 
At the end, the mother-in-law has had a supernatural mask fused to her face, and the daughter-in-law runs away, thinking she has turned into a demon. As the mother-in-law gives chase, protesting that she is not a demon, the film suddenly ends out of nowhere without a proper resolution. Of course, open-ended conclusions could be absolutely great, but in this case, it was definitely to the film's detriment, and it doesn't even feel like a proper ending, all things considered. Number 5. Don't Breathe, The Turkey Baster Fede Alvarez's stunning sophomore feature Don't Breathe is, for the most part, a brilliant piece of minimalistic horror. It takes an incredibly simplistic premise. Three thieves burgle a blind man only to discover that he's in fact a ruthless and dangerous killer, and uses it to deliver a stomach-nottingly tense thrill ride filled with outstanding set pieces that largely avoids unnecessary elaboration and narrative dead weight. There is one distracting exception though. During the film, it turns out that the blind killer is holding a young woman captive in his base and it's later revealed that he's forcibly impregnated her in order to get a replacement baby after the woman accidentally ran over his daughter. This captive woman is accidentally killed by the blind man, who later takes protagonist Rocky captive in her place, and prepares to impregnate her using a turkey baster filled with his essence before one of the other thieves saves her. This entire subplot should have been cut. Throwing sexual violence into a film without justification is never a good idea, and not only was this whole sequence overly distasteful, it was also a jarring narrative left turn in what was otherwise an impressively grounded film. The film also shows an entirely unwanted close-up of the blind man's semen in the baster, and Rocky using the baster to fill his mouth with it after she's set free. Did we really need to see that? Most definitely not. Number 4. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Franklin Blowing Raspberries it's likely that every single time horror fans rewatch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, they feel tempted to fast forward this scene. That's more than fair enough. Even now, almost 50 years after its release, there's a strong argument to be made that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the most terrifying films of all time. It's a fearsome, scream-inducing, and frequently harrowing nightmare that still hits just as hard now as it did back then, but still, no movie is perfect. It does feature Franklin, the brother of Sally, who ranks among the most annoying horror movie characters of all time. This whiny and rude killjoy is very hard to sympathize with, and during this particular scene, in which, while his sister and their three companions are exploring, he starts ranting aloud and blowing raspberries, viewers will have to resist the urge to yell, will you just shut up? at the screen. Basically, this is two distractingly awful minutes buried within what is otherwise 90 minutes of near faultless horror cinema. Number 3. Dead of Night, The Golfer's Segment Horror anthologies are a tricky beast at the best of times, but Dead of Night really stands out as one of the finest examples of this inconsistent subgenre. It consists of several short stories alongside a well-written framing narrative, and while that terrifying segment with Michael Redgrave and the ventriloquist dummy is what everyone remembers the most, most of the film's other segments pack a considerable punch too. Well, most of them. While four out of the five segments are smashing little horror stories, the fourth segment, a comedic tale about a golfer being bothered by the ghost of his former love rival, is downright bizarre, neither funny nor unsettling, and absolutely kills the film's momentum. To be fair, it's understandable why this was included, as horror films weren't really being made in Britain during the early 1940s, due to the Second World War, so perhaps it was thought that a tiny bit of comedy would help the film appeal more. Still, the inclusion of this segment was arguably a mistake. Number 2. Hereditary, The Unintentionally Hilarious Climax If it wasn't for this ending, Hereditary could easily have been a full-blown horror movie masterpiece. After all, most of the film is a home run, a twisty, visually breathtaking, and emotionally bruising meditation on grief and intergenerational trauma led by a powerhouse Oscar-worthy performance from Tony Collette. Unfortunately, the film completely drops the ball in its concluding moments. The mature, emotional terror of much of the film is replaced with B-movie schlock as possessed people start flying around and comically decapitating themselves. At many screenings, the entire audience was howling with laughter. It's also a very cliched ending. After being so original for much of its runtime, the film instead becomes just another film about possessions and secret cults and the like. The thing about writer-director Ari Aster is that he's an unreal visual stylist, but a questionable screenwriter. Watch his short film The Strange Thing About the Johnsons if you dare. It's one of the worst things you'll ever watch. Astor is a talented man with many great ideas in his films, 
But this terrible ending and his second film, Midsummer, a silly and thematically incoherent folk horror that wasn't particularly good overall, indicate that he struggles to represent these interesting concepts in a satisfying way on screen. Number 1. Insidious Into the Further in regards to the 2010s, a decade that saw the horror genre experience a delightful revival, one of the very first truly great horror films of that decade was Insidious. While very familiar on the surface, Insidious stood out from most of the other supernatural horror films being made at the time because it was really, really bloody scary, thanks to a smart script, a gifted ensemble cast, and James Wan's phenomenal directing. Most of the film is a spectacular scare fest, but it did get quite a bit of criticism for its final act that's completely warranted. The third act sees Josh go into the further, an astral dimension filled with ghosts, in order to rescue his son Dalton who's lost in there. This part of the film is unsatisfying to put it mildly. It's dull, visually uninteresting, and so, so much less frightening than the rest of the film. Perhaps worst of all, main antagonist the red-faced demon had been a very frightening presence in his brief appearances throughout the rest of the film, but when Josh meets him in the further, he's suddenly more like a really, really bad Darth Maul cosplayer. The film does get its mojo back with a strong epilogue scene, but this whole sequence is still an epitomizing example of a terrible scene lurking within an otherwise great horror movie. And there we have it folks, our list of great horror movies that do have one particular scene that are just not as good. But please do let us know down in the comments section which horror movie you absolutely love and you would say is perfect. And while you're down there, please do give us a like and hit that subscribe button. If you want to come and follow me on socials and talk to me all about horror, I am at Strawn87 on Twitter and on Instagram. Come and say hello to me on there. Thank you for watching everyone, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and until next time, take care.